What is up, YouTube fam? Robbie C here. Today we are at Pinson Bicentennial Disc Golf Course. And today's a monumental day because with the start of 2024, we are back to playing sanctioned tournaments and we're starting a new series, Keep It 1000. Before we dive in, we gotta ask, how are you doing today, Tony? Are you having a good day? So catch me if I fall. So what is the Keep It 1000 series? Well, if you watch Foundation Disc Golf content, they have two different series that I think are really impactful and allow you as the viewer to really dive in with them. And that is the Break series, where last year Hunter tried to break 68 in New London. This year, Trevor's trying to break par at Independence. And it's a really cool series because you can get invested in it and see them go through uh, the trials of trying to shoot a really good score on the course. Another series that they do is the Course Conquest series, where they set a line or a bar that should be somewhat reachable for them. And Trevor and Hunter play alternate shot going through on those lines, trying to conquer every course in their area. Keep it 1000 is sort of Robbie C's twist on this and what I'm doing locally, where I'm going to go through the local courses in my area and try to shoot a thousand rated round on camera for you guys, because this is gonna accomplish three different things. The first is honestly for me, I am getting back into competition mode. And the reason that I took a year off is because I wanted to up sort of my game and my skill level without the worry or stress of trying to play in PDGA sanctioned events and knowing that I can't really try to improve and change anything because there's always an event around the corner. So we took a year off to try to dial things in. So where do I land after a year? This is a great test. The second reason is to put some pressure on me because oftentimes one of the most difficult things to simulate for or tournament experiences when you're in a tournament there is that pressure of these shots matter this is a really cool opportunity for me to simulate that pressure and to bring you guys along for the journey perhaps you can look at and do something similar maybe it's not a thousand rated rounds but maybe for those of you who are trying to break that 900 rated barrier you try to keep it 900 and see what you can do in your local course and then finally the third is to see yeah do we have what it takes can i actually shoot thousand rated rounds we're going to hopefully stretch this out and see if we can shoot thousand rated nines on a variety of different courses, especially around the Birmingham area. But this could also be cool when I travel to other courses. Here at Pinson Bicentennial Park, it is a par 54. This is a pitch and putt course. Matt Dollar, who is a local pro to the Georgia area, came to this course and shot a 16 down, which ended up being a 1036 rated round. In that same event, Bolenbowski, who is a local pro, shot a 13 down, which came in at 988. Now, I shot a 12 down, during that same tournament and that was a 973. So with my 12 down being 973, Boland's 13 down being 9 88, we're getting about a 15 point swing for each stroke, which means that in order to shoot thousand rated today, we're going to need to land at at least 14 under par. But what happens if we don't shoot that? There are some other barriers and markers that we wanna look at as well. If we shoot minus 10 or 11, that's gonna be around the 950 rated mark. And if we shoot minus seven or better, that's gonna be in the 900s. That's where we wanna be landing on all of these. We at least wanna be shooting 900 rated golf, but we're gonna see, we got 18 holes. We're showing one shot only. We're gonna play this as legit a tournament experience as possible. And let's see what we come up with. You guys ready? Let's jump into hole one. Hole one coming in at 264 feet. Basket's just right there. We're going with the pig. Now, for those of you who've been watching the channel this month, this is not the star pig that we've been using because uh, at the end of this week, I'll actually already be in Boston, Massachusetts for the Northeast Disc Golf Expo. And with snow possibly being on the ground, things like that, I didn't want to lose that star pig on a trip, especially because we're playing Maple Hill and all that. So I put an R Pro pig back in the bag, nice and blue, easy to find. Let's see what we can do. 264 feet, already kind of feel the nerves. Right next to the basket, it's 264 feet on the money. Let's go make a putt and start under par. One, two, three, four. A little 12 to 15 footer, get us started. Only 13 more to go. Whoop, whoop. All right, coming in 126 feet. Basket is just tucked right behind a tree right there. My first ever ace, it took me eight years to get my first ace, but my first ace was on where the silver pole is right there. Okay, got a decent skip, so we're gonna be putting back into the wind, but that's fine. You gotta do your routine, gather up, focus, get that happy thought rolling through your head. 
and then dive in. There are lots of birdie opportunities, obviously. There's not a single hole out here that I feel like we can't birdie, but there are lots of holes that are shorter that we can mess up. And so the key to scoring today is gonna come down to putting. If you're playing a pitch and putt, most of the time, if you execute your shot, you're gonna be somewhere in the circle, just outside the circle, but it comes down to if you your putter's hot. That's pitch and putts always come down to that. Hole three, 168 feet. This one, you're punching down this tunnel and then it's got a leak out to the left. If from my vantage point through the trees, I can see the basket pretty clearly. First really hole that's asking us to like hit a shot. I think you could be tempted to come up with like a run up and all that, but we're gonna try to just flick of the wrist up shot. It's gonna be wide. We're gonna leave ourselves quite a bit of a putt. Probably got about a 20, 25 footer, so shouldn't be too bad. Let's see if we can capitalize. So normally you'd like to come inside of that like that last set of trees that I went just outside of. Bang, on the pole, on the hole four. First challenge overcome. 261 feet, we're here, hole four. Basket sits just there. This is one that in the winter plays significantly easier because you gotta contend with those trees and when there's leaves on it, it like really makes it so you gotta go a lot wider. The key here is to not get hung up in that tree right there. So. When I'm visualizing a hole and I'm saying something like that, don't get hung up in that tree. I think so often people will be like, all right, don't get hung up in that tree. Don't get hung up in that tree. And what do they do? They fire it straight into the tree. It's because their only thought is on the trees. I'm actually, the tree makes like a V like this. And there is, I'm extending that V. Think about like a space coming out from the top and bottom of the V going out that way. And I'm just trying to paint it right through that and then let it crash down. Okay, we definitely touched the tree. I don't know if you guys saw that, but we hit about where we wanted. I just didn't push it straight enough. So it started fading in at that gap and I wanted it to be going straight through that gap. That's fine. Should still be in putting range. These are the ones where you can overthink it and you can just be like, all right, sick. You just gotta, I think that we end up, we're fourth down through four and you can get into moments like that where you're like, oh no, it's super short, we're putting well. Don't mess this up, Robbie, don't mess this up. That's a, that's a, in your mind, that's a gimme putt. So do the gimme motion. Obviously don't like not just think about it, whatever, but like right here, instead of switching to my putter, like putting putter and being like, all right, I gotta do this. <laughs> and then just missing it to the right. We don't want Dennis to get the satisfaction there. So we're gonna make sure that we just toss it in. It was right there, so easy. Four down through four, let's head on to hole five. Hole five, 231 feet, just out there. Got to throw a straight shot here with, we're going precious child again. Pigs all day. I don't really need to get that far back. Just throw a nice, easy shot. And once again, that's why we love the overstability of Precious Child there. Best driver is whatever disc you drove, or best putter is whatever disc you drove with underneath the basket. This is a hole that we're actually gonna switch to the pole cap. I'm going with the pole cap versus the pig here because once you get out there, it actually fades downhill. So that overstability we've been looking for in Precious Child, we actually don't want this time. We want this to stand up and we're actually okay if it drifts right a little bit. We're just trying to punch it through this gap. That's all we're trying to do. See, just ride straight, holds out there, gets underneath the basket. Boop, 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 boop. Now here's the deal. Some of you might be watching this shot right there and you may be like, wow, Robbie, that felt like an easier tap in distance than the pig on hole four. And there's a very real chance that it was a shorter tap in all that, but this basket is jank in terms of it's leaning down. So if it ever a point where you're like, oh, something's coming through my head, something feels different about this putt, Go to your routine. That's why we practice the strokes. That's why we have a routine. Feels off, go to that routine, do what you can do. We wanna take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is actually Flight Towel. A lot of you are gonna know Flight Towel for their towel products. I mean, 
It's kind of in the name. And I love Fly Towel for their towel products. They've got Trash Panda towels. They have Robbie C towels. There is a host of things that they have. Another thing that Fly Towel does that a lot of people don't realize, they have some merchandise such as these beanies in the colder weather. They actually just dropped new hoodies and jerseys that look sick. Can't wait for mine to get in. It's going to be awesome. But another really cool feature that Fly Towel has is cart accessories. If you have a Zuka cart, there are so many accessories that Scott and the team 3D print and make a custom for Zuka carts that actually go to a whole nother level. Let's take that plain silver grip. They have printed grips that can go on. They're super comfortable, super squishy, make it feel so good grabbing that handle, especially in the cold. You wanna be grabbing that metal handle. I mean, that's freezing. It can take your hand, even if you have a hand warmer on, to instantly not good. This thing slides on, it's super snug when you put it on, so don't have to worry about it going anywhere. They come in a variety of different colors. They also have putter clips, so rather than having to go in and out of your bag just to grab that putting putter on all these tappings that we've been doing, the putter clips make it super easy for you to slide your putter in. It holds them, they don't go anywhere, they don't wobble, anything like that. But their newest accessory is one that is a content creator, or even from a coaching perspective, I wish more people had, and that is a phone mount. This thing is super cool and it takes just the little cap on top of the Zuka car. You pop it off, this really cool piece slides in so you can either buy that really cool piece to be able to easily attach a phone mount or phone holder to your cart or you can go the full package and it comes in this beautiful little bubble mailer inside that has the piece that inserts into the cart as well as an actual phone mount so that you can keep score, not have to worry about your phone, it stays there very easily, but it also you can flip it up and you can record your throws while you're out there on the course. Something I ask my students all the time is like, hey, do you have footage of you throwing on the course? Not just throwing into a net, but throwing on the course because believe it or not, lots of times it's very different for people. Scott is a Zuka car user, and one of the things about Fly Towel that I love just as a company overall is that they are disc golfers making products for disc golfers. So make sure you go check them out, flytowel.com, and you're gonna use code 128799 when picking up those card accessories or even picking up some towels for the start of the new year as you're heading into your tournament season. So with all that said, let's dive back into hole seven. All right, coming in, hole seven. This is 167 feet, basket's just right there, and it's slightly downhill the whole time. My issue with this hole most of the time is that if I try to go at the basket straight up, there is a card path that is about 25 feet, 20 feet beyond the basket that I have been over many times. The distance control on this can feel super tricky, but if you guys watch this channel, you know what is the most reliable shot in disc golf. You know the answer, it's there, it starts with an H. Come on. This is one of those weird ones that when I throw the standstill on here, it feels like it gets in my head. So just like we did on the putt on hole six, if it gets in your head, just throw, get back to normal, get back to routines, do what you can. Throw that hyzer out there, let it do its job. Bang, definitely a factor to consider on a lot of these pitch and putts that can be older courses because disc golf's kind of progressed to creating some longer courses. And so these older baskets can really get in your head. Don't let it, throw your normal putt. Here we are, hole eight, we're feeling good. We're on pace, we're doing what we need to do. This is where we step up and have to move to a different level. Hole eight, 192 feet. You're gonna see really two trees grouped off to the right. I guess there's a third tree, but that's over the ditch. I'm pretty confident, so it's not really in play. We're kind of throwing at that thicker tree that the basket is just to the right of, and we're hoping to get inside of it or outside of it. So we pushed it just a little too far, just a hair too far. We're not gonna have just tappings for the rest of the time. We're gonna be making some putts, so we wanna make sure that putt stays warm. We're coming in just outside 18 feet, just inside of 18 feet, however you wanna describe it. bank that's that feels good guys that's what we're talking about that's the momentum getter right there is it's our first real putt since hole three so it's been five holes draining one feels good let's take that confidence let's take that momentum keep building baby keep building 185 feet here basket sitting right there this is one that i like to go a little squirrely on what i like to do is there's this big little like it's a multi-cluster tree I think it technically counts as one tree, but for you like 
arbologists you tree people out there what is it does it still count as one tree if there's like it looks like multiple trees are coming out of it i like to go around that tree and fade in towards the basket okay i'm going inside two times in a row we've left ourselves a farther putt than we have in the last hole but that's okay so we build momentum let's make a putt now for my peeps that came to Birdie Fam Takes Over Birmingham, which is my Patreon event where we do like a live in-person gathering. Those that played this course last year will know the front nine, the scoreable half. So the fact that we're minus nine through nine feels good because that means we're already in 900 rated territory. We needed to shoot a minus seven to be at 900. So right now at nine now, we're sitting in the, like the 930 range. We got to maintain, but this the, the length of this course comes on the back half. And we see that immediately whole 10 266 feet place farther than that the other tricky part about this is that that last tee box is like literally a dry it's like a road they got turned into a tee box so this is your first like distance shot and i think the shortest tee pad on the whole course and it's raised up so you have to like if you want to put any momentum or anything into it gonna kind of step on we're going precious child here we're gonna try to throw it out there hit that gap on the right and then let it fade in close to the basket We hit it with a lot of power. The power was not the issue getting it there. We definitely hit it well, but we sent it incredibly straight and I needed it on more hyzer. I needed it pushing left. Probably gonna be our first par, but this is, I was telling uh, my friend, John Acton, probably five to seven holes that I think are like, I'm not looking at them being like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna birdie this every single time. And I need to get at least two of them in order for us to meet this goal, as well as being perfect on every other hole, this would be a phenomenal two to save. Nope. 211 feet. If you go, you've got big, big tree out there, but like through this gap, you can see the basket. The thing is, is that that road that's just right of the basket for a long time has been OB. So if you go OB over there, it was just a tap in birdie or whatever. But now if you zip it onto the road, that's hazard. We're gonna go out wide, give this a chance, let it fade back in around that big tree. If you end up left of that big tree, it's tough. Oh, that's in the road. That needs to hit a barn. <sighs> okay, gotta focus up, gotta pull it back in because we are not going to take a birdie on this one and we got to make this putt or else we're taking a four which takes us backwards like i said this place is hazard so uh unlike ob this is the ob line if i was ob which is where it's resting in the road i could get a meter in in a semicircle right here and boom like that's just that's a tap in but because it's hazard I don't get any relief so it's not like I get to move it at all. I got to put it from right where it is. This is putting for three. Bank. Okay. This is tough because traditionally I play this hole really well and usually get a birdie on it, but I just fluffed it. We there's like wind swirling around and I let it get in my head and I fluffed it instead of sending it because i was just sent it i was worried it was going to hold it really straight and i was going to end up way past let the wing in my head we're recalibrating and we're back in it coming in at 300 feet it's out there to the left it's a backhand hole you could like the forehand all the trees like there's trees on the right that obviously you, you don't want to hit but all the trees to like miss or left so the forehand gets dicey unless you can just like turn one up and you're I'm gonna hit that tree on the right. it, dude. That looks really good. I just started it too far right. It was enough hyzer. It was the shape, it just too far right. I don't think I have to get down on one leg here, but because that just feels low, I'm gonna do this to give myself a better vantage point and just pitch it up right under the basket. Bank. Almost dunked it. Coming in hole 13, I'm gonna throw a pig. Normally I'd have to disc up to something faster just to have the distance. That's fine. I feel like distance wise, we might've been short. We came off of it a little bit. Mistakes were made. First time ever throwing that shot on this hole. Bang. 
bank. So we're in the 950 range. See if we can't keep it going. All right, so this one comes in at 240 feet. This is one of, there's like a couple out here that I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's true. At 240 feet, this is 20 feet shorter than hole 10, which is the first one we parred. No way. Low ceiling, just gotta get it to the trees. Oh, that's gonna be a tough putt. 27 feet, low ceiling, got some stuff in our way. This is where, whew, gotta have it. Nope. <laughs> Pulled it to the right. Gotta have a birdie. We got a birdie out. Not where we wanted to be for two reasons. This is 336 feet, our three longest holes. We have four holes left and the three longest holes on the course are the ones we have left. We don't have the destroyers in the bag anymore. We got Raiders. We definitely have headwind coming off of this. I wanted to have two strokes to play with coming into this because on these Raiders, I'm just not sure what they're gonna do when I throw them on forehand. Nope, no turn out of it whatsoever, dude. That is fascinating. We're not done yet, I guess. I can still throw this in and get an ace. We gotta throw this in. Unfortunately, we got, we're throwing uphill and we got a low ceiling. And if we miss the basket, it's gonna drop off behind. So we're gonna give this a safe run and play for hole 17. Weak, Dennis. Weak, Dennis. Bang. Sending my hand, gotta pop it. So here you can go for the hero shot up high over to the right. The funny part is, is I don't know if the pavilion, there's literally a green disc on top of that pavilion. Lots of people get stuck up there. Or you can go out around the left side. It's 330 feet. So we're going to correct and just hang this out wide. Let it fade on in next to the basket. Here we go. And now you stand up. Is that too far? That time it stood up, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Apparently we didn't give it as much gusto as we thought we did. And that's probably just still being trigger shy with them. We have to ace one and we got to birdie the other in order to get that 14, see what we can do. If there is a hole that we feel like we can ace that's left, it's this one, 260 feet, hole 17. Gotta have it, gotta crash in. Okay, little right to left, here we go. Visualize the line. It's wide and it's far. And it's not an ace. Here we go. Gotta have this. When I hit that middle stretch, I mean, we took so many pars in a row. We were mentally shaken. We were mentally moved up. To be able to come in the last hole, I know there's still a chance. We just gotta throw this in. Regardless of what happens here, ladies and gentlemen, what a first installment of the series. We're either gonna get it or we're gonna come up one stroke short and shoot a 988 right around. Pretty sure you cannot ace it. I'm pretty sure if you go the hyzer line, you're gonna hit that tree that's right of it. We're going pink stalker, Z stalker. We're hanging it out there. Alrighty, this is still for confidence and all that jazz. Okay, we know that Ravi C loves to throw pigs and polecats. And when you put me on a course where I can throw pigs and polecats, went pretty well. I mean, we saw, we can birdie everything out here. Like, I just gotta hit my lines. The other thing is, is that like, I've been working on with my coach, working on some like, feeling the pocket and everything like that. It's when I'm trying to put some zest on shots and really lean into it and come around, that's where we messed up. I mean, we messed it up on 10, we messed it up on 12. So I'm not trying to say like, oh man, the course got me. Like I mean, it did, obviously. I didn't shoot 14 down, didn't get my thousand rated round. But 988, I'm feeling pretty confident. What do you guys think? How do we feel for our first competitive round of myself of the new year? Feels good. Let's build on that. Let's build on that momentum. So one stroke away from conquering this course and keeping a thousand here. So 
Looking forward to it. What is, what is your goal? What is your rating goal to shoot at your local course? Let me know. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're gonna leave you with any of the 13 birds. <laughs>